She is writer, producer, director, showrunner. She brings her unique voice and vision to Asia's TV and film industry. This time, it's lights, camera, action for Managing Asia. Managing Asia, I'm Christine Tan. I'm here at the award-winning Ochre Pictures Studio to meet its founder, Jean Yeo. You probably know the shows, Lion Moms, Last Madame, and Echoes of Time are just some of the dramas produced here. The Singapore-based production company has produced nearly 800 hours of television and films, which have been seen in more than 20 countries. Oka Pictures has been nominated for an international Emmy, won five medals at the New York TV and Film Awards, and has no less than six Asian television awards. Welcome and the help. creative mind behind it all <laughs> is founder Jean Yeo. I caught up with her for a tour of her new studios. How many productions are happening right now? We have on hand five productions, but they will go on at, at different times, uh, some all the way till 2024. You're actually a showrunner as opposed to just a pure director. What is that? A showrunner is a fairly recent term coined by Hollywood because they want someone who will be accountable uh, for all creative aspects of the job. So a director only looks after the directing and all that, but the showrunner is involved in, for example, the selecting the wallpaper, the, creating the mood and the treatment. So the showrunner is the person that the broadcaster can blame if the show doesn't do well, or they will give the showrunner the most credit if the show does well. So let me show you another set that okay. we have. So this is the other set. So Jean, when COVID first broke out last year, a lot of people were divesting their assets. But you, on the other hand, you spent 1.5 million Singapore dollars to buy three industrial units here in this building to set up a studio. Why? I think during the first lockdown, what we call the circuit breaker, I think we were very worried that the locations was not going to be forthcoming. Like we usually shoot in houses, restaurants and all that. So we made a very major decision during the lockdown itself to buy um, 8,000 square feet of uh, industrial property so that we can set up things like that and we have the freedom to film. Mm -hmm. So while everybody else were stopping the shoot, we could continue to film because we have our own space. So with the investment you made in this building, are your studios fully occupied? It was occupied enough to have not enough space for us. People who wanted to rent our set for their production, it, of course when it's free we want to monetize our sets, but it's full to the extent that I can't really give them you know, more than a couple of weeks or a couple of days and so far I have to say it's pretty full. Mm. So we have within our 8,000 square feet about three productions that's running at the moment. Jean is the very definition of multi-hyphenate. She's a showrunner, director, designer and scriptwriter. She says her ability to switch hats has helped her to stay ahead in a very competitive market. Tell me how you got inspired to get into the business. Was this something you dreamt about growing up? <laughs> um, I think I've always known growing up that I would be in the, some kind of arts industry. So um, I was hired uh, and joined the National, Singapore's National Broadcaster um, even before I graduated and I spent about five years there. But um, after about five to six years, I feel that there's so much more to be learned. There's so much more out there that I want to experiment, I want to try. And um, that's the reason why I set up Boca Pictures, because I wanted to try new genres, I wanted to try uh, new content, new medium. Um, the second reason why I want to, you know, was because I wanted more creative autonomy. I wanted to be able to select the jobs that I really wanted to do and not you know, those that I'm assigned. Okay. Yeah. So when I look at some of your productions, Last Madame, for instance, mm -hmm. was by far the most successful, winning many awards. I mean, apart from the personal satisfaction of getting these awards, has it helped financially? Has it helped to pay off financially for you, these awards? For sure. First of all, with winning the award at Busan International Film Festival, Asians Contents Award, um, I there was a lot of uh, media mileage. And I think that critical acclaim enable us to secure a lot more confidence in us. Just earlier this year, there was uh, an offer to buy over Okur really? from a majority, from a North Asia, um, a much 
bigger production company who wanted to become a majority shareholder. I think it came about because of that, that project. I mean, over the years, there have been many inquiries about M&A, mm -hmm. um, angel investors and all that, but I think we got our creative autonomy quite, um, uh, so we don't want to, 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 to get into a relationship unless we're very sure that there's a shared mindset, there's shared values um, to want to create. Let's talk about OTT platforms, Disney mm. Plus, Netflix. I mean, to what extent has it helped your industry? Has it boosted your international exposure? It's created a lot of excitement in our industry for sure, but we are still in very nascent times. You must remember that the Disney Plus was just set up a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Netflix just came in a, a couple of years ago. So the first thing that we tried to do was to get our content um, on the streaming on the platform, which we did. So that's the first step. The next step for us is to work on our original um, content with the Netflix, Disney Plus, and so, so forth. Um, and this is what we're trying to do now. Um, it's not easy, I must say, because in Singapore, our market is tiny. Mm. Any of these platforms that come to Asia, they're looking for the big market. So what we're trying to do is to make them realize that Singapore, while our market is small, I honestly believe that because we are who we are, we are we're savvy, we're cosmopolitan, and we have a good understanding of East and West. The it's film, all in the pitching, isn't it? It's all, yes, I mean, it, it's been evidenced by the feature film market. If they want to see whether a film works in Asia, they test it in Singapore. Mm. So if it works in Singapore, it's likely to work in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Malaysia, and so forth. So by the same token, I feel that there is a lot of opportunity for us if the OTT platforms are convinced that we can produce from for a bigger market rather than just Singapore. Singapore is a small market. Uh, so when you go overseas, you're faced with big competitors like South Korea, for instance, with hits like Parasite, Squid Games, and Kingdom. How do you compete budget-wise? Oh, uh, compete at the moment, no. We want to <laughs> work with them. I mean, one of the, the things that we've always been working on was collaboration, mm -hmm. co-production. They call it co-production, but I want to use a broader term of collaboration because um, now we're working with Taiwan, we're working in Australia on uh, developing some content. I mean, my dream would be to work with a major Korean um, production house to create something so that we Are can you learn close? from them. We're very close. I, I, I cannot reveal too much, but pre-COVID, we had an opportunity that was really sort of hampered by COVID. It was a major production house that picked us to be the partners. So now that things are opening up, I'm hoping that, you know, the conversation can pick off where mm. we left off. As a director, uh, as a CEO of a production company, how do you balance the need to make money and the need to produce good quality content at the same time. A lot of levels, even choosing investors intelligently is, is, is part of a deal. Um, along the, the years, we have rejected certain projects that came to our table that we feel wasn't aligned and wasn't going to... Um, I think for, at a very basic lev level is how well you run the production. And with limited budget, there's still ways to tell good stories. And finally, it's been 21 years. You've mm -hmm. been named one of Singapore's best directors. You've had many awards to your name. What is your ambition for Ochre Pictures going forward? Um, my ambition for Ochre Pictures is to be a production powerhouse like Studio Dragon. Studio Dragon is one of Korea's, if not the biggest, production company. And they are sought after by the likes of um, OTT platforms, over-the-top platforms like Netflix and you know HBO and all that. So my ambition is to be like them, to produce uh, quality content for diverse audience and my dream is that as dramas, as content will be enjoyed by people around the world and one day there will be an S wave, hopefully like a K wave and um, Oka will be producing a lot of those content. So if Studio Dragon came knocking on your door one day and say, hey Jean, I want to buy your company, what would you say? Welcome. I'll, I'll love it. Thank you. <laughs> Studio Dragon, I hope you're listening. Deal closed. <laughs> <laughs> Deal closed, yes. For sure, yes. Jean, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, it's been a pleasure, Christine. <laughs> and that's a wrap for us. Do check us online at managingasia.cmbc.com. Until next time, I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching.